ఎస్పెషల్లీ జాపెండ్ టూ వన్ నైన్ యూ రైన్ అండ్ అవర్ నాగరాజ్ డివిజనల్ బోర్డ్ చైర్మన్ ఈ ఆల్సో కంటెస్ట్ ఫస్ట్ టైం ఫర్ ద కౌన్సిల్ ఈ స్టూడ్ ఫస్ట్ బిగ్ నెంబర్ ఆఫ్ కార్పొరేట్ మెంబర్స్ ఇస్ గివెన్ బిగ్గెస్ట్ సపోర్ట్ టు హిమ్ అఫ్ కోర్స్ ఇంక్లూడింగ్ మీ దో ఐమ్ నాట్ బిలాంగ్స్ టు సివిల్ బట్ ఐ గివెన్ మై సపోర్ట్ టు హిమ్ బికాస్ ఈజ్ హ్యావింగ్ ఎ బిగ్ జీ లా కాంట్రిబ్యూటింగ్ సంథింగ్ టెక్నికలీ ప్రాబ్లమ్ ఇన్ టాప్ అవర్ ఐఐ ఇన్ వేరియస్ యాంగిల్స్ వేరియస్ మీన్స్ Apart from this elected five council members, nearly about 22 council members are representing either state chairman or local chapter chairmen who are exceptional members of the council. Totally 26 council members out of 100 council members are from civil division. Imagine 25% of council is by civil. Then mechanical come about 24. So like this many departments are going there. So totally 100 members are representing in the council, putting for all the divisions. And today, this our IAs are, all of you should understand, apart from this 125 state and local centers, 520 institutional members, institution can become institutional members in IAI. 520 institutions in the country, they become institutional members. Then apart from these two, there are six, four hours who are the organs of our IAI. One is like SK in Adamad, which is the prestigious organ of IEI, and other four hours in the five four hours in different states. Six four hours, there are organs. So these are all functioning very effectively in the country of India. Apart from that, there are six overseas chapters, like in Malaysia, Bangladesh, Qatar, and so Abu Dhabi, etc. Six overseas chapters, again attached to Indian IEI. So we are having international name and fame. then ie is having lot of attachment for interest forums like wef they are so on there are many are there let me consider for india now now what we are supposed to do what ie is doing there ie is not only encouraging this technical seminars national seminars all india seminars beyond this every division we are having one convention per annum every division there are 15 conventions per annum so seminar symposiums in number of seminar symposiums from different company different local chapters different chapters once they are going to apply to the technical department which will forward to the concerned division board chairmen and members for approval if they are going to forward it by their approval as a cate chairman immediately is to encourage by approving almost all technical seminars and come seminars and webinars by giving some little financial help for them, which is going to happen this year again. But this uh, convention, only one convention per annum by one uh, division, civil, chemical, everyone. But this convention, many members will uh, apply. We cannot give every member, only one in a year we can give convention because they are also giving very good funding. If you take civil convention, let me talk on civil only today. If you take civil convention, 3 lakh rupees you are giving for civil convention conduction. 3 lakhs. Because it is one of the biggest uh, divisions. Civil and mechanical, 3 lakhs. Remaining all divisions, 1 out of lakh. It is a seed money. But only thing is, they should do the convention in a different uh, status. And then, there will be a board meeting in the day of convention day. So, all these division council members, they will visit to the center where it is going to happen, what center? they will take a meeting there. So, host center will get good exposure with all these council members. Council members will give recognition to the center in a proper way. So, these are the ways and means they will increase. Apart from that, we are having R&D cell in IEI. We are giving a funding. The students, those who are doing a good projects for bachelor degree, students who are doing a good projects in master degree, and faculties or research scholars who are doing PhD, the scholars we are giving a funding for them support for them financially up to certain extent the only thing is again we are going to ask them one of your article or you have to make one paper to publish in our own journals of springer because springer journals is there by iai very good number of series of journals is coming there so we are putting one condition then second condition you are putting while submitting your thesis you should include you are supported by iai So we are giving this, throughout the country we are giving this. A good fund is allotting for the R&D activities also. So all the members of the various divisions in your local chapter, 
please percolate this idea and encourage all these budding engineers in a undergraduate level and graduate level post graduate level this graduates already and again those who are doing r and d activities for phd programs you can encourage them but again there we are telling for undergraduate student they should be a student membership they should have for post graduation and the research scholars this become a members in the iai then only we, we can uh, support them financially and we are interested in this work responsibilities of utilizing and uh, giving the certificate to the respective principal of the institution and the grade of the particular candidate we are asking them after utilizing this funds properly submit the utilization certificate to proper way we are encouraging the r and d activities then we are releasing lot of journals and we are releasing lot of other articles also like this in many ways ia is encouraging for all our budding engineers personalities to come forward to be, become a student membership after becoming a student life and once you are going to become graduate become a member of this professional forum the only lonely professional forum which is having 100 years old history today csi is having iii is having and uh, chemical designs are having many forums are coming forward i am very happy but we should be proud of our own forum iei this is my appeal to all of you the other thing every state chairman is going to become executive member of the council for the two years and again every local chapter chairman also become executive member provided there is a one restrictions the total membership in that local chapter should be minimum 1 percentage of total members of our iii just now i was having interaction with our chairman elderly person he is telling me there for another 10 months before march if you are going to increase your membership as an existing up to the 400 by adding another 100 to 150 i will see that from june onwards june council meeting september council meeting december council meeting our andaji can represent in the council as an exception of the council member then after the andaji term anyone who is going to become the chairman of this chapter of farzabad local center they are going to automatically become exception member of council two years very good exposure very good recognition now i am a cater chairman i want to encourage every local chapter in the state of your maybe delhi or haryana or any state of any other state in the country they have to come forward to take a membership drive in effectively so that they will get good recognition and we want to see you not that we only we should be council members in the, always and permanently we want to see more number of people are coming new blood is coming new innovative ideas are going to flow so that we can take our iai to a better heights better visibility better identifications in all the sense so with these few words by congratulating pradhapur local center chairman honorable secretary and all of the committee members that you have taken bold steps to have this wonderful topic of this really wonderful topic 3d printing technology and innovation technology in civil engineering particularly it's not only for civil actually it is having uh, its own advantages in civil mechanical chemical electric in all divisions 3d printing is coming now very very important you have taken this topic and nearly about 100 participants are there today for program i believe as an already about uh, and the participants are already there in line they are listening us for all of them to by wishing they are going to get very good inputs from the panels of two members one is dr jay jay guru another one is tushar joshi they are going to give a lot of inputs to them let them get benefit out of this webinar by wishing a big success for all of you by wishing they will get a good inputs from all this program and by wishing your center is going to become shortly and as early as possible to enter the council by with my wishes in my period i want to approve it with this let me thank all the participants and i am very happy and uh, thanking our uh, aparna madam who is from headquarters representing she is very dynamic lady who is having a very good enthusiasm in her she is taking a lot of steps with this let me thank nagaraj chairman of civil engineering division board and uh, chairman of uh, pradhapur local center Engineer Sandeep Ondaji and our secretary and our 
moderator overaiji for all of them by thanking them because i attended another meeting in online at 445 onwards i am missing all of you let me take take by thank you leave up sir thank you all jai hind thank you thank you very much sir for your wonderful uh, path which you've laid down and really given a history of iii the the wonderful legacy what we have and i sincerely hope that with your wonderful words more and more members will join us in corporate membership and we will definitely look forward for a seat in the council for our chairman thank you urmat sir thank, thank you. you sir god bless you all yeah i would we would just now start the proceedings immediately uh now i am just sharing a screen uh, my screen now and i would just give you a basic uh, brief on what are we talking about so this is a 3d printing technology i'll just give you a brief on today's topic and we'll fast uh, move on to our uh, panelist today's webinar will provide about the insight towards the advancement in the use of 3d printing technology for construction industry in particular and also guide us the future of this technology in civil engineering 3d printing is uh, finding increasing application in the building segment because there is a huge demand of high performance and easily cons uh, constructing complex designs this technology helps in us in creating lightweight components such as walls panels while maintaining structural integrity and lowering the handling and transportation costs as the technology advances so do our imaginations the limits what we can do slowly gets pushed further and further back making room for new ideas and innovations a brief on 3d printing its ability to print three dimensional objects anywhere where there is a 3d printer using materials ranging from plastic to certain kind of metals now this technology has opened doors for many industries 3d printing brings two fundamental innovations first is manipulation of objects in their digital format and secondly manufacturing of new shapes by addition of the material over the last few years 3d printing has been gaining popularity in construction and architecture as the technology has matured its position has changed from curiosity to a viable tool in a building trade uh there have been many 3d printing printed structures now which are coming up and we've started creating more sustainable housing with many different creative avenues available to us construction companies and national governments have raised the bar with ambitious projects to 3d print bigger and bigger structures the goal was set 3d print entire buildings today's webinar will provide us insight towards the advancement in the use of 3d printing technology for construction industry and also guide us on the future of this technology a brief on the global overviews in several countries 3d printing projects have been initiated and in some of the countries they have also been finished on the left hand side of the screen you can see a vincent decoration design engineering company in china which which made this world's tall, tallest 3d printing story uh, structure this is a five story structure it was completed in back in 2015 on the right side is a uh, largest 3d print, uh, printed building in early 2020 which was finished a 6900 square feet administrative building in dubai what we have here is a first ever 3d printed house in germany on the left hand side a two storied building with approximately 860 square feet of livable space per floor and on the right we have a world's first 3d building office building it's a 2600 square feet uh, office complex and again in dubai this is a marvelous project which has come up it is inspired by potter wasp it's a an italian uh, uh, architectural firm has used 3d printing to make this dome beehive like structure out of zero emissions clay which means that you can when you want to break it off you will definitely it will be totally only waste will be plumbing gas or electrical components no nothing else so this method of construction was called tecla t e c l a which which is short of technology and clay it was co developed by mario kusela with the help of another company called wasp 
which specializes in 3D printing solutions. This is in Italy. Gentlemen, this, once we're talking of India, this is a project which has been done in India. This is a, India's first 3D printing home, which is ready. And this is created by Tosta Manufacturing Solutions. And I'm happy that we have a representative from this company as our panelist today. This Tosta Manufacturing uh, Solution, it, has, it is founded by Aluminia of IIT Madras. And this 3D printed house overcomes the pitfall of construct, uh, conventional constructions. So today we have our two wonderful panelists with us who are associated with 3D printing technologies, especially for civil engineering applications. I now invite our first panelist, Dr. C. Jai Guru. He's professor in civil engineering and uh, he's a registered academic, PSNA College of Engineering Technology, Dindigal, Tamil Nadu. He's, I, I actually have a five page resume with him, with us, and he's highly qualified and technically sound. Some of them, which I can just enumerate so that we can start with the session right away. He's got a research interest in, uh, interest in structural health monitoring, climate change aspects. He's been awarded Mother Teresa Gold Medal Award in 2014, and he has many publications to his credit. So I would just request uh, Dr. Sri Raj, Rajaguru to kindly take up the session and start the session, please, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, in fact, it's a, a lengthy uh, explanation. And uh, I thank Indradeep, sir, uh, for uh, giving a, a bio data of myself. In fact, uh, I am an academician. And, uh, I thank the uh, Institute of Engineers dignitaries who are all here for giving me this opportunity to speak in front of such a large forum as uh, the chairman uh, was pointing out. So this is the oldest uh, engineering forum of our country. So I feel more proud and happy to present in front of these members and the dignitaries. So once again, I thank the members. Uh, and as uh, Mr. Sandeep Gonda sir and uh, Indradeep sir has pointed out, this 3D printing is actually now, uh, it's becoming a known technology to all. So with this uh, background information and uh, not to waste much of our time, let me share my screen because I have got a PowerPoint like presentation. And uh, in my presentation, I am going to address the technical aspects because uh, when uh, the Institution of Engineers Faisabad Center is contacting us, uh, Mr. Indradeep sir was pointing out like uh, we are going to discuss in two different aspects. So one is on the technical aspect, another one is on the practical aspect. So we are here, uh, Mr. Tushar from uh, Prasta uh, Constructions. So he will be covering the practical and the implementation aspects of this 3D printing technology. So I do not want to touch on the practical aspects. In fact, in the uh, question and answer session, we'll be doing that uh, now. Now, let me throw a light on the technical aspects. So, what is the brief history of this 3D printing, where it started, how it has been in progress and uh, where we are now. So, this is what uh, my presentation will be covering. And I hope Mr. Tushar or of uh, Twasta will be covering like uh, what it is being implemented in practice. So with this uh, introduction, let me uh, share my screen. Yes. So I hope all of you are able to see my screen. So the title is on 3D printing technology, which is an innovative technique in our civil engineering industry. Just a minute. Yes. So my presentation will be something like uh, on this outline. So I'll be speaking about the introduction, then what is 3D printing. In fact, Honda uh, sir and uh, uh, Obrai sir has, pointing out, uh, has been pointing out all these aspects and how it works then comes on 3D printing in construction and in, in construction the main aspect what we are going to discuss is on mixed goals, materials and the machine design because this is the key point which every civil engineer or any application engineer should know 
then we'll be seeing few 3d printed buildings which uh, some of the buildings has been already pointed out by Oberai sir then what will be the future of 3d printing finally the challenges and the research scope because why I am uh, introducing this uh, last part of the slide that is on challenges and research scope because uh, here we should understand that is like uh, what are the challenges what are the shortfalls and what difficulties because uh, even the uh, chairman when he was uh, speaking in the beginning he pointed out uh, that the panelists should throw light on the cost aspects that is how far we should make it cheap etc so the challenges part will be addressing all those things that is uh, what will be the difficulty where we will meet uh, with the hurdles and how to tackle them etc and the research scope why i am placing this uh, title on like research scope is because many budding civil engineers are in this uh, uh, meeting and uh, many will be doing more explorations in their uh, industry that is in their construction field so this will throw a light on the research aspects also so the main purpose of this evening uh, talk or this evening webinar is to throw a light on the 3d printing technology and with this background information you people will be starting thinking on how it will be implemented or at least on some aspect you will be thinking about this webinar like so and so points were discussed okay fine so we will start implementing or if someone is implementing or someone is uh, giving you this idea so this particular webinar should automatically come into your mind so that you will say others proudly that i also do know what is this 3d printing because that is the main objective of this webinar so with this background outline let me start with the first slide so these are all already covered in the uh, discussions of the previous speakers so let me uh, rush it up so the construction industry is uh, continuously experiencing criticisms because when we look into the roman uh, civilization or the ancient indian civilization there were no much innovations followed in our industry so because that is why the advanced construction technology is the word which we are po popularly speaking every day or most of the meetings it covers the modern techniques practices etc so incorporating this advanced construction technology in our practice will definitely increase our quality efficiency and sustainability because nowadays we do need to speak about the word sustainability in this particular decade because that is the main thing we have to discuss and with this uh, title that is advanced construction technology i am just uh, bringing in this 3d printing in construction in other words we can call this as a 3d printed concrete now what is this 3d printing this already uh, the previous speaker has pointed out uh, in fact this is a small machine in which uh, uh, artificial human heart is being 3d printed you just you can have a look into it the 3d printing technology is mainly a prototyping process which will be involving with a 3d computer aided design data and in fact it is also called additive manufacturing why we are using this word called additive manufacturing is previously we had the technologies involving subtractive manufacturing or diminishing manufacturing so i'll show that in the coming slides so it is a prototyping process and uh, when we look into the history it was first introduced in 1980s but uh, in those days it was unbelievable and uh, it was very expensive then it gained the pace only in the 2000s or after 2000 and in particular it was gaining in uh, more momentum in the plastics industry metal industry aerospace and dental and prosthetics more more probably it is applied in the prosthetic prosthetic industry so here the main thing what we all must understand because many new entrants are there in this meeting so you should understand first that the printing is not going to be done with the ink it is done with the variety of material so materials may be including plastic metal polymer even a human tissue and edible food in in fact in uh, countries like us there are uh, chocolates available with the 3d printer technology sand glues and finally now we are going to speak about the mortar or the concrete the second part is we are not going to print it on a flat paper it is it is a three dimensional object which will be printed with layers and you will be getting a final uh, prototype or an object this is what the thing we, are, we are should not confuse because 
when we speak about the word printing many people will ask are we printing with ink are we printing on a paper now this is totally different that you all first make it note in your mind this is what i was speaking about the su conventional subtractive process in the first picture you can see the top picture uh, a small uh, raw material is there that is a metal in which the machining will be done and uh, you will be getting the final product in uh, production industry the scrap or the waste will be available whereas in additive manufacturing process what uh, professor honda sir is was telling mr honda sir so he was telling like a layer by layer deposition that is what called additive manufacturing so some process like sintering etc is involved so wherein the material will be deposited layer by layer so this all you all you please uh, understand imagine a device connected or a printer connected to your desktop is going to create the solid objects with layer by layer here the scrap or the waste will be nil or very very meager this is what the point we all must know so here uh, may in particular the sintering this all uh, lies with the manufacturing or the production industry so i'm just uh, throwing light on the word sintering then comes it is uh, being in the uh, that is involved in shoes guns smartphone covers prosthetics and even food industry so this is what the main thing so whatever we are doing a model in a computer aided design software that will be scanned like uh, many of you would have uh, watched movies like uh, robot etc in hindi so there the object of a person will be scanned using a 3d scanner and a prototype will be manufactured with the same image so this is what the thing the software will be creating the layers like slices so the printer will create that particular layer. that is first the software will be given layer by layer then the printer will create that uh, software model whatever is available in the system or the uh, software that will be printed or created layer by layer here we can use the word called creating instead of using the word printing printing the word becomes fans fancy so everybody started using the word printing but it is actually creating or manufacturing and finally you will be ending up with a three dimensional object so here the other industries what we are using in fact many of you would have come across this 3d printed uh, models in dental dental industry so there uh, you can see the artificial tooth or whatever uh, the uh, gum bones etc you will be getting that uh, similar or uh, exact model for your particular uh, oral hygiene that is the dental industry they are following this thing and in even in prosthetics prosthetics or artificial limbs we are using this 3d printing technology so i have got a small video of uh, 3d printing in the chocolate industry which i will play in the last because considering the time let us uh, go to the discussion because here uh, i have got a video of uh, a chocolate mug which will be printed layer by layer that i'll show you if time is available so these were the few 3d printed models you can see the artificial jaw of a human bone in the first picture then in fact in the dental or the uh, human industry that is human and artificial industry then the guns then uh, architects architects are using this uh, miniature models now coming to the main part of our discussion 3d printing in construction or in the 3d printed concrete so in the construction industry the 3d printing is used to create the components or sometimes to print the entire buildings so here i, I should stop you please read the word again or read the statement again we can create the components or we can print the entire buildings at present many architects or civil engineers are doing uh, 3d printing of construction components the construction is well suited to 3d printing as much of the information necessary to create an item will exist as a result of the design process now here the last point you all please uh, make a note the recent emergence of building information modeling that's which, which everyone used to call as bim bim in particular will greatly facilitate the 3d printing because now many construction firms are introducing or uh, moving towards this bim wherein the entire uh, data of a particular structure to be constructed will be modeled so therein with that model or the bim data we can correlate that with the 3d printing industry or the 3d printing software which will be more helpful for us to execute this in real time then 3d printing uh, that is it's actually a construction method here the concrete is poured out of a printing nozzle and does not need any former or subsequent vibration 
uh, Mr. Indradeep Saras also was uh, showing a video wherein you can see the concrete uh, mortar or the concrete will be poured using a printing nozzle or a gun like nozzle without any former. So here I, am, I should uh, introduce the new word called CC or contour crafting. So please uh, uh, make a note of this word contour crafting in your minds. Because this is the main word which everybody should know when we are speaking about 3D concrete printing. So contour crafting is a method of concrete printing that shows great potential in improving the construction techniques. Yes, this we already discussed. I will just skip this slide. So these are some of the 3D printed architectural models which are in implementation. Many architects are following these type of models which are printed out of the 3D printing gun or the 3D printed printing uh, printer. So these are some of the three dimensional models. This is an another uh, model of a 3D printed architectural prototype. Yes. Now, what is this 3D printing in construction? Several companies like uh, uh, the other speaker was pointing out like in Dubai or in uh, China, everywhere, several companies are experimenting with different methods, many different technologies. And among them, the pioneer we would usually say, say Professor Bero Koshnavis. He is from USA at the University of California. He has been researching this process of 3D printing. And in particular, he is the one who has introduced this contour crafting into the picture. So he, he has started research from the year 1997 and after 2000 he has started implementing it. This contour crafting is an extrusion based layered fabrication technology that build the objects with successive thick layers, layer by layer uh, that which smoothens out with the external surfaces. In 2014, this already Indradeep Sar was pointing out, a Chinese company Vincent has demonstrated uh, the 3D printing with the printing of 10 houses in 24 hours like some record then it has also constructed an apartment building so this picture throws a major light actually if you are not able to see uh, the map behind you have a look uh, deeply into the monitor actually there is the uh, world map at the back side so professor uh, Bero Koshnavis is in the picture all must know about him he is the one who has introduced this counter crafting so he is from California the west coast of USA and uh, you can see in the next picture, uh, some other uh, people have brought this uh, 3D printing technology from USA. But in particular, the next biggest uh, achievement came from China. You can see in the east part of this uh, world map, from China, we have got this in 2014, uh, the 3D printer. This is the history of contour crafting. And now in India, in 2020s, we are speaking about contour crafting or 3D printing. So many other, particularly in European countries and in specific uh, Italy, Germany. So these were the countries we are, they are exploring or exploiting this process of uh, 3D printing. But many technologies have come, but finally now most of them are sticking on with the uh, technology of contour crafting because 3D printing concrete in concrete we can do with many technologies, but one specific technology is contour crafting. So we all are going to speak more on this contour crafting. A contour crafting machine is actually a gantry like girder. That is like a gantry. You can see in the picture, uh, it will be a like robotic extruding system. It consists of two pieces and can be quickly erected on a construction site. And the gantry frames can be modified to climb. That is, it will be creating like a, So imagine this girder. In the picture, you are all seeing a girder. So this girder will be moving on all the three directions. So normally rails are there in say for example the rails are placed imagine that is along the x axis so it will be also shifted if needed along the z axis and the vertical direction also it will be moving and in that gantry the printing gun or the printing nozzle will be moving along all the three di di dimensions all the three directions so which means you will be able to print that concrete so if you are able to see a video in the video also where what Indradeep sir was playing so there you can be able to see how it is working. Now in this, the main uh, technical part that is uh, in contour crafting, what we all must know is each layer of concrete coming out from the machine. That is uh, like, uh, just a minute. Each layer of concrete will be about 4 inches thick, minimum, right? 
or normally and it will be 6 inches in height. Some people use, use with uh, 5 inches or 4 inches etc. And we will be using some special hardness in the concrete. The material should be hard enough. I repeat the material should be hard enough to support the next layer. By the time the machine circumnavigates the outside parameter of a structure. The machines can also be automatically embedding the conduits, uh, electrical, plumbing and air conditioning units as well as the electronic sensors. So all these things are coming into the picture now and uh, this actually the implementation part or the practical part I hope Mr. Joshi will be covering this in his presentation or we will have this during the technical discussion part after this presentation. So this is an another 3D printed castle model uh, done by Andrew Rudenko in Philippines. Yeah, this is what the thing. I have got actually a video of this, uh, which I uh, restrict to not to playing because uh, considering the time. This video is available in YouTube. I now uh, request all the listeners who are all still not aware about what is 3D printing. You please go to YouTube and there you can type this Rudenko or uh, the 3D printed castle. There you can see the excellent video of how the 3D printing is done. Then coming to the mix, actually here uh, this is what the vital part that is the concrete mix must be designed to meet certain criteria which is having direct relationship with the methodology. Thus it is critical to ensure a complementary connection between the design of the mix and the printing machine because without that nothing is possible. So what are the objectives we want to know? or what are the things we have to optimize in our mix design. So we have to maximize the compressive strength because it should be strong enough and we have to maximize the workability because uh, you are going to pour the concrete. Just imagine like uh, it should be pourable at the same time it should not be more fluid. Then maximize the flowability. This is what I was speaking about. Then maximize the buildability upon pouring because it should become stiff immediately and it at the same time it should be able to carry the next layer of concrete because we cannot do one layer on single day wait for 24 hours or uh, one day of curing next we can start with the next layer if that's so if there are some say 40 layers of uh, uh, that is uh, 3d printing for a house then we have to finish the work in 40 days that is not the point to be noted here so we have to maximize the buildability then also we have to maximize the speed of concrete setting then finally, the appropriate setting rate must be ensured for bonding with the subsequent layer because the bonding also must be there because it should not be like a, uh, like a rope uh, uh, rotator layer by layer. If you uh, remove one rope, the another, all the rope will fall down. It is not like that because it should be having sufficient bonding also. Just imagine I have noted here some six different parameters which all must be put together in our mix. This is what the secret of 3D printing. Many of the commercial firms or many of the patented 3D printing technology people will never come out with this because this is actually the secret behind this. Or I would now request the budding engineers, you can collaborate with the nearby educational institutions and you can start doing research because at IIT Madras, I know that is uh, some five years or four years back, I was attending uh, a lecture or one day workshop on this uh, 3D printing. That is what uh, where my starting point is. I visited IIT Madras and uh, uh, that is uh, Professor Manusandhanam sir, Professor Ravindra Getu sir. So they were giving some interesting presentations and they showcased a small 3D printer of concrete printer in their laboratory. So there they explained about the mix, but these all should come not on a standard procedure. This should come on a trial and error basis. So that is why I appeal to all the engineers in this forum to explore because this is where we are going to innovate because you, you see most of the industries, particularly the production industry or the automobile industry, they are collaborating with the uh, innovations of IT or computer technology or internet of things etc which our industry is lacking because we have to come forward the civil engineering industry or the construction industry we have to come forward 
collaborate with all the modern innovations that should be coming only by practice or only by experience we cannot uh, bring it all of a sudden and we cannot say I, sh I, I have referred a code book this is a code because these things are cannot be incorporated in a standard practice because this is not actually a standard practice this is a procedure which is currently under innovation which should come out by experience so i appeal all of you to note on all these six points i, I am repeating that again in my next slide this is actually taken from a research paper that is important aspects to achieve the goal that is the one is extrudability flowability buildability compressive strength then open time so please note all these points these all should put together because we the engineers should not say a company or a firm which is doing the 3d printing we are we are hiring them because now you see when the ready mix concrete was introduced some few decades back that particular time they will be coming with the concrete what they manufacture now what we are doing we are just uh, implementing our mixed design into that particular manufacturing of that concrete so we will instruct the uh, ready mix concrete people you have to do only on m25 mix or you have to do only on the mix ratio what i am writing and you should not add this much amount of water you should add only this much amount of water and you should add this much amount of super plasticizer otherwise my entire concrete is going becoming waste because what uh, point now we are when we look into some 25 years back whatever the ready mix concrete person is bringing we have to pour and if some mistake comes we have to rectify now we are insisting the ready mix concrete people do this much of mix because we cannot say that the ready mix concrete has the person has brought the concrete and the concrete is, is failing or it is not good. So this point is where we have reached after some say 10 to 15 years. Like this, in another decade or the next decade or within another 5 years, we people should be able to say, my concrete which you are using for your 3D printer should have this much of extrudability or you should have this much of flowability or this much of compressive strength. So we have to educate them or we have to insist them in our order whatever the order or whatever the conditions we are uh, specifying them we should mention so how it will, it will be possible because once when we know all these points extrudability for, we cannot say the 3d printing company has come printed this house after some five day five years the house is having uh, some malfunctioning or the concrete is not good that is not the point now what are the materials which we can use in this 3d printing so the aggregates normally the aggregates will be in the size of 2 to 4 mm in size 4 mm will be the normal size then cement sand super plasticizer accelerators retarders and any other necessary admixtures and finally water and uh, i have to mention a few because this is a commercial thing but uh, people do know about sika so what they have done is the mixed design was the critical part of the technical support and it conforms to the extruded material pumped through small hose and cement then they are telling like some sika viscocrete etc which i am not going to throw light on my presentation a thixotropic filler then 0 to 1 mm size of sand and water it could be described as a mortar mixture because what sika is telling is even we can also say it is not a 3d printed concrete it can be even a 3d printed mortar because the size of the aggregates is hardly around 3 mm which we cannot say it is a full time uh, coarse aggregate so if you are not using a coarse aggregate it will be called a mortar it is not a concrete so we can also call this as a 3d printing mortar or 3d printed mortar next the machine design so the, next, the important part is the mechanics part or the machine design part so in this machine design part that is the design of the appropriate machine that would function as a 3d printer for the concrete mix is critical for the project to get success that is why we have to design the tank and the pump pump the printing nozzle also we have to design because it is where you are going to pour then the motion control system and its movement on a triaxial plane everything should be controlled or considered so we have to bring in the production engineer or the machine engine machine design engineer we have to collaborate with them and for operation we need a system software everything should be collaborated and we all should bring it together so that we will come into the 3d printed house or construction so this is again by, by Andrew Rodan Co. It is a 3D printed hotel suit building in Philippines with a jacuzzi tub. 
So this is what the photograph of the 3D printing under construction. I will show the videos at the last. So the world's first 3D printed apartment building, this is what uh, Pro Mr. Indradeep Sir also was uh, shown in his presentation. Yes, this is what the picture. Now 3D printing in India. So what uh, we should know, some Indian companies have already taken the lead and have begun their R&D. The cement giant Ultratech has begun their research to develop a combination of material concrete that is with the concrete suitable for 3D printing. Then the R&D wing of LNT is also working on this automation. Uh, this is what the video actually I will say what this video is it is covered by Vyan News uh, and in this video they are showcasing the first 3D printed uh, that is building or the house in India which is done by one of our co-panelists uh, that is the Twasta. So they are the first people to come out with this first 3D printed building in India. Uh, if I am not wrong I think it is in 2021. Uh, I think Mr. Joshi will uh, throw light on this. Now let me just show few of my uh, that is other things. You can see uh, I think all, all are able to see my screen. This is a, a, a press release from IIT Madras. The finance minister inaugurates the India's first 3D printed house in April 2021. This is 600 square feet single story building which has been constructed using the indigenous concrete 3D printing. And it is done in collaboration with the Habitat for Humanities Terrilling Center for Innovation in Shelter. And uh, this is what the news. Uh, our finance minister Ms. Nirmala Sita Raman has congratulated IIT Madras also. So I think uh, Mr. Joshi will speak more about this. And, and another news uh, in 3D printing that is LNT has completed construction of actually they are also climbing but it is actually a model type building. It is not the real building. It was done by LNT at their office premises. So they are claiming that this is a first 3D printer. It is actually done by support of Cobard. Cobard is actually an international 3D printing uh, organization. So they are doing that. So Cobard, I have got the website also. So this is what uh, the Cobard. And in India, we have got uh, apart from Twasta, LNT, we have got one more company called Marfedo. So it is actually you can see here in Marfedo, many uh, models are being uh, given. So they are from Noida, UP. So this is what uh, the Marfra technology, many things are there. And Cobard is actually an MNC company. Uh, this is what uh, I was telling this Andre Rudenko Philippines. They have got this 3D concrete printer. They are, they are given like a package. It is like what will be your size, you can see here. So they will do all those uh, things. This type of technology now is being implemented in one of the firms like Twasta. And this is what uh, the contour crafting, the pioneer of uh, uh, our uh, 3D printing that is uh, Professor Bero Koshnavis, what they are doing, they are now collaborating with NASA and you can see they are doing this, going to use this contour crafting. Yes, so this is what the thing and I'll just, uh, this is my last uh, video, I can show this uh, video with VLC because that will be more comfortable for you to listen.
Yes. So now uh, let me come to the challenges. So this is where uh, we all should uh, stop. This is my last slide. So the challenges are the IPR rights or the intellectual property rights what the 3D printer uses or do having because uh, this is where the secret lies. So we cannot uh, explicitly expose that. But what we the engineers can do is we, we can dig up and we can explore and we can become masters with the technology. Then the industry is the civil engineering industry itself is actually a conservative industry. We have got lot of regulatory barriers whatever you see. So in fact uh, there are few videos in YouTube which uh, even the uh, top notch academicians are speaking. When, when the government approves then only this technology will be coming into the picture because we have certain regulatory barriers and many labor unions will not allow the industry to come out forward. So we uh, the engineers should break out those barriers and in fact this is having a low profit margin because uh, you see uh, a company will come and print the entire house for you within say some 10 days and the cost will be comparatively very cheaper with the regular ongoing conservative industry which many people will uh, that is will not allow they will uh, do some sort of confusions etc Th that is what i was telling it's actually a low profit margin uh, organization that is technology the concrete structures generally need uh, addition of reinforcement this is actually now under exploration and uh, gradually the technology also will add up with the reinforcement and the last point is though concrete printing has gained increasing popularity the issue with the strength has still remained as a large unanswered question for the 3D printing experts because the structural strength uh, we have to discuss because it, it should be done only on an experiencing basis or only on a research basis we have to do that. So with this uh, slides actually I think I have uh, yeah one more point is uh, we can also use like FRC or ECC and BIM etc that I have also discussed then we have to integrate this with IOT internet of things and all those things. So with this background information I think I have made up my time of 30 minutes and uh, we will continue further things in our discussion. If necessary I can play a few more videos what I do have but uh, considering the time I have uh, that is confined the thing and uh, one more final point is let me uh, come back to the uh, that is uh, I will stop my sharing. Yeah, so I just want to show uh, this is my 3D printed uh, model which uh, uh, my wife has done. Actually, in our institution, we have a small 3D printer, and you can see my name name has been engraved in this. Dr. C. Jayaguru, Dr. C. Jayaguru. This is actually a plastic layer by layer uh, 3D printed model. So this I am having in my table of in my office. So this is done my done by my wife. She is actually interested in 3D printing. So like this, we can start exploring. This is actually a person with a theodolite. So he has got a small eye also. The eye is actually a hole which is not subtractive manufacturing. This is additive manufacturing. So like this, we have got few models in our house also. This is actually in my table of my office. So like this, if you uh, start with interest, you can do much more. So uh, with this background information, let me uh, complete my presentation. And I will request uh, the moderator, Mr. Indradeep sir, to take over the session. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Jagro. And your presentation has been quite an extensive. And I think uh, most of our attendees have benefited a lot from uh, your deliberation. And what I would like to mention is that now you've shown us small models. I think we'll have to come to your house and take some of the souvenirs from that. So uh, moving ahead, uh, I would request all the attendees to kindly post your questions in the question answer uh, chat box. We'll be taking shortly after the next presentation. 
I would just now like uh, to invite our uh, next panelist. Yeah, Mr. Tushar Joshi will make a. Uh, he is a, a metallurgical engineer and MBA, and he is handling the sales and marketing of uh, from Tosta Manufacturing Solutions, and he is also a person involved in actually practical aspects of uh, 3D printed uh, houses by Tosta. So I would just now like to uh, pass on the baton to Mr. Tushar Joshi for his deliberation. Sir, please. Thank you. Thank you so much, Abhiraj, sir, for first of all to give us the opportunity to present here at this level. And also, it was a very extensive and uh, it's a very detailed presentation given by Dr. Jaya Guru. Uh, thank you so much, sir. We have uh, actually, I also learned a lot <laughs> from the presentation. Yeah. So I'll just start with. Uh, so the presentation which I'm sharing with you today, it's going to be just a highlight of what Pasta has been doing. Okay, uh, so just a moment. Sure. I hope you can see my screen. Yeah, I'll just start. Just a moment. yeah. Can you see the presentation? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Okay, so as uh, uh, Dr. Oberoi said, and also uh, Dr. Jay Guru has mentioned about Kosta in the presentation. Yeah, so it was started back in 2016 by the three alumni of uh, IIT, uh, Aditya, Vidya Shankar, and Parivatan Reddy. So they are all passed out in 2016, and I'll just give a little bit of background. So they started with a club at IIT Madras uh, on 3D printing, and they had one workshop over there. Uh, and I think Dr. Jayaguru was also mentioning about the same workshop uh, at the time. And uh, from there, they got this idea and they got the vision that we can solve the Indian affordable mouse, uh, housing problem. And uh, 3D printing is what will help us the delivering that uh, solution to that problem. Uh, so you all know what is 3D printing is. So critical aspects of 3D printing. I'll just run through the presentation uh, as fast as possible. Uh, so yeah, printer, material, software, and printing strategy, everything has been explained by uh, Dr. Jayaguru. And I am proud to say that Twasta has developed all these four technologies in-house, completely made in India. Okay. Uh, so next all, yeah. So the need for the automation in the construction sector, as you can see in this graph, is compared to the other sectors, there was no automation re till recently. Uh, in the construction sector compared to the other sectors. Okay, so what are the advantages? So first is faster constructions as walls uh, can be 3D printed, then less waste compared to the conventional practices as doctor said that it's a additive manufacturing, it's not a subtractive manufacturing. Okay, so uh, considering the less wastage and less dependency on labor, it increases the affordability and also with the 3D printing, it, uh, uh, it actually influences the customization and also utilization of each and every, every space of the house or the structure that you're going to live in. So Twasta's aim uh, here is to automate the construction sector up to 80%, starting from the planning phase to the finishing processes. And also we are uh, providing here platform plus applications. Okay, so what we offer, uh, so till now we have uh, this technologies that, uh, currently. So I'll just touch upon them uh, uh, overall. So first is offsite 3D printing technology. Okay, uh, so what is offsite 3D printing is, uh, is the part where the 3D printer is uh, installed at the factory at one location and uh, 3D printer is uh, printing the modules. And then we take those modules to the site and then we assemble it on the site. So that is how we constructed India's first 3D printed house. And I'll show, I'll walk you through the video of that, uh, of that process soon. Okay, so then second is the on-site 3D printer as we all know. And as you can see in the diagram also, where the printer itself is at the site and printer is printing the whole structure. 
okay and then mobile 3d printing also is one of the part and the directly printable inks as in the material which is needed to print the structure okay so yeah this is the tostas manufacturing fa facility at chennai uh, this is our offsite 3d printer okay as you can see that uh, uh, yes so here in this image it is clear that how offsite 3d printer it, it's building a uh, modules okay so the whole structure is divided into walls number of walls and then this walls uh, uh, then with the help of our sl uh, slicer softwares we uh, decide on the modules uh, size and even the layer sizes how will be the printing strategy and accordingly we print the structures here Okay, uh, this is the first structure that we have done in 2018 uh, at a club called Imprint. So this club has been started with uh, in association with uh, IIT Madras. And uh, for that, we have developed this structure back in 2018. And yes, as you all know, this is the first 3D printed house was uh, the planning of this house was started in 2020 and it was completed. Uh, in 2021 and uh, Dr. Nirmala Sitaraman uh, has uh, inaugurated this house. Okay. Uh, so I'll just uh, walk you through this presentation, uh, uh, through this video and I'll sla side by side I'll explain you also about the process. Okay. So first is the SketchUp. 2D model, and then we develop it into a 3D model. So generally the softwares that we are using here is uh, either a Grasshopper, Rhino, uh, this kind of softwares, which are very good in UI and UX. Yeah, so once the model is developed in the, uh, in, the AutoCAD, uh, in the AutoCAD, Grasshopper or somewhere, uh, then we can feed that same model into the so that STL file is the input for our slicer software. Then slicer software, we can uh, convert it into G codes and then it will send it to the printer. Okay. So this is how one wall module looks with the infield pattern inside. Okay, so here printer at the site will start printing uh, each and every wall module. Once the uh, modules are printed, we ship them to the site with the help of trucks. And on the site at the same time, you can start with the foundation. So currently the foundation and the roofing for the structures are being, do, uh, are being done by conventional methods. But in the future, we are, uh, we are going to explore the, how th with 3D printing or how the automation can be bring in with this okay so once the foundation is done we can start assembling the modules and the structure okay and here for the first 3d printed house uh, we have actually plastered on the outer uh, inner and outer walls and we have intentionally kept the 3d printed finish uh, at some uh, some areas so that people can get a touch and feel of how the 3d printed finish will look like and how uh, the normal uh, and it can also look like a normal house at the same time yes And this is our second uh, second project that we took in the uh, heat of COVID uh, second wave. Uh, we have developed this uh, three doffing units in uh, across Tamil Nadu in three uh, government hospitals with the help of Saint Gobain. So, what doffing unit is is generally a sanitization platform for all the healthcare professionals. So from one side, they go in, they take out the PPE kit, they dispose it, and they can take shower, they can 
uh, get sanitized themselves again and they can walk out of the uh, other end, other exit. Okay, so this kind of structure. So here you can see distinctively that uh, we wanted to keep uh, 3D printed finish on overall this overall structure on the outer front, so that people can see exactly how the 3D printed finish will also look like, and which is not bad at all, right? Yeah, and as uh, Dr. Jay Guru was saying, this is how you can incorporate uh, electrical pump, plumbing, all the MEPs into the structure while printing itself. So you can give all these provisions during printing and uh, apart from these structures you can also go for a few architecture elements facades you can have the wavy finish uh, for the walls on the outer side you can have this kind of planters which is very unique okay uh, yes so here we are, i'm just showing that what kind of uh, wavy patterns we can give how aesthetically pleasing it will look and uh, before proceeding further, I'll just like to say that apart from this uh, two main projects currently, we are doing two projects with the defense where we are building two sanitary blocks with uh, at Jaisalmer and uh, two uh, guest houses at uh, in Gujarat. So these two projects are about to complete and there are around four to five projects in line and we recently brought one architect with us so you'll be get you'll be getting to see a lot of new designs and unique architectural elements uh, that we can bring in with the help of 3d printing so yeah okay so equalization collaboration this was not able without uh, it was nothing possible without the help of all the research institutes and the research that has been uh, carrying out at the back end and uh, till now uh, our main focus is on research because uh, 3d printing in concrete is still at its nascent stage there is a huge potential which even we have not discovered yet and our aim is to discover it how can we make it more sustainable in the long run how we can make it more affordable in the long run yeah so as doctor was saying that we need to touch upon a costing part as well so our aim here is to lower down the uh, bring it down than the conventional and then we can start with executing the mass projects on a mass scale okay uh, so here are a few of the awards that Twasta has received i'm proud to say that Twasta has received uh, startup uh, of the year uh, 2021 award recently in the last month uh, and uh, for that yeah as i was saying we have in collaboration with iit madras uh, scrc a lot of research institutes uh, so that has been going on at the same time uh, so meet twasta's team uh, started with 20 currently uh, in past five to six months we have expanded to 45 so yeah that is it thank you so much okay uh that's it about my presentation yeah we can i'll just hand it over to the over sir thank you Tushar-ji. thank you for the excellent presentation of twasta and definitely we are proud that uh, twasta is a indian origin startup company which has uh, brought india to a, on the world platform uh, now we proceed to the question answer sessions i have got many questions and uh, first of all, many most of the attendees, they have really uh, congratulated uh, Faridabad Local Center for uh, getting uh, this webinar done. So I thank all the Faridabad Local Center IEI team for that. Uh, uh, proceeding to the technical questions, the question, what, first of the question which we have got is from Mr. Parmanand Shetty. And the same question has come from uh, Ms. Adesha Pradeshni, who say that what about the reinforcement part? How is it done? Or do you eliminate the reinforcement? So I think uh, Professor Jaiguru, can you answer on that? How about the reinforcement? Yes, sir. Actually, reinforcement part, uh, many of the companies which is doing 3D printing, they are doing this as a exploring thing. Like, uh, for example, one of the videos what even Tushar sir uh, was showing, that is if the three, if, we, if you are leaving some cavities in it, and in that cavity, we can insert the reinforcement. I have got few videos, but uh, I would rather say better people start uh, exploring in YouTube, because in YouTube, many uh, videos are available, how to insert reinforcements. Because as of now, 
uh, as this is something like a load bearing structure so in civil engineering we have studied uh, two points one one type of structure is a load bearing structure another type of structure is a framed structure so this particular 3d printed structures are all something like a load bearing you can see even the video of uh, the first 3d printed building in india by uh, twasta they have dig up the foundation like uh, the conventional method what in olden days people followed for uh, masonry construction like uh, layer by layer the foundation was laid made then they started but in framed type of structure we have to look into it because um, here how they are placing lintels is lintels will be like uh, precast lintels so they will be coming up with the 3d printed walls then lintel will be kept above the opening because you can see that the printing nozzle when it is coming to a particular point it will stop then it will shift for some point then it will go because that is a opening a door because that door we can place the lintel like with a pre precast concrete at the top so as of now there is no in, that is embedded reinforcement done in all the 3d printed buildings but it is in the research level uh, one point where people have started is we, they are int introducing the reinforcement in the cavities like how we do know in masonry structures we are introducing reinforcement in the corners to uh, make it uh, seismic resistant etc we are introducing reinforcement in the corners we are embedding concrete that is a uh, reinforcement in the layers of the masonry walls it is something like that but we have to do as of now only g plus one that is ground floor and first floor alone we have complete because it is something like a load bearing structure once we uh, can come up with the presentation that is uh, ideas we can introduce uh, I think Tushar has Tosta worked on uh, the reinforcement part or uh, it is still on the nascent stage as uh, Dr. Jayaguru was referring to? As Dr. Jayaguru properly said that is still in the research part and uh, currently we are using reinforcement. It also depends on the properties of the structure, what is going to, going to be used for. So currently we are using reinforcement for all the properties, uh, all the structures that we are building. But uh, And looking forward in the future, we are trying to automate that part as well. So, yeah. Uh, one question from Simon J has come that is any special software required for design of elements or conventional software like STAD Pro, ETAB, Robot are sufficient? Any of you can answer that? Any special so software is required or I think normal softwares can do? Normal 3D softwares can do, sir. Uh, but currently, we have started using uh, Rhino and Grasshopper uh, currently because they have a, they are kind of giving you the complete BIM structure, BIM model type rather mm -hmm. than the just the CAD model. So, but you can use the CAD model as well. Uh, it depends, and uh, this is just uh, just to give a 3D object, uh, 3D uh, 3D object look. But then you have to feed it to the slicer software to uh, command it to the printer. So there, oh. there is one more software which, which is needed. In, in Autodesk also, they have uh, brought a software like uh, Fusion 360. One is called a Tinker. I was just, yeah, I was expecting that answer. Yeah, Fusion 360. Yes, yes. Right. Yeah, Fusion yeah. 360 is there. Tinkercad is there. Because uh, many, many companies are bringing out. But uh, what, what will be integrating that particular model with the printing uh, medium, that is, or the printer? So that depends upon the patented uh, things because many uh, printers, they do have patented software for their own. So for example, one particular printer will support uh, only Fusion 360 yeah. or another yeah. printer will support uh, Rhino, etc. So we have to collaborate with those people and many are available in the market. We cannot confine with one or two. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. I, I, uh, one, one of the questions has come from uh, Mr. Selvaraj. He's from IEI Tiruchirappalli. He says, what is the waste percentage in subtractive and 3D printing? The comparison, the wastage comparison of the two technologies, let's say normal construction and 3D printing. What could be the waste percentage? Uh, Tushar, have you started, have you worked on that? Some data is there? The wastage part? Uh, data is there, sir, but currently I won't be able to tell you the exact figures. Mm -hmm. But as far okay. as what we have experienced, yeah. Uh, yeah, if Dr. Jai Guru first uh, enlightened upon this, I can give you the later on, answer later. Yeah, yeah it is actually uh, when we uh, look at few of the videos by uh, even by Twasta, I have noticed those videos because when they start this process, I was telling you right uh, the mortar design or the mixed design. So if the mixed design is good, 
we need not go with the waste because these are all by exploration or by experience mm. uh, pre- in the beginning uh, mr sandeep sir also was pointing out that because it is like uh, additive manufacturing so we have to do things by experience when we go with uh, manufacturing industry they have started this 3d printing technology in their industry some 10 years back mm. but now in construction industry we are a beginner we, we are something like a, a newborn child so we have to start with it so uh, probably after some 5 years we will be able to minimize the uh, wastage because Great. as of now as of now many videos are there in youtube including the video of twasta they will be going on printing suddenly it may fall down so yes. the entire entire mortar goes waste entire mortar this generally uh, this generally happens for a research when you are doing a lot of research at the back end uh, this is uh, supposed to happen uh so what twasta is doing is we are even using that material we have few uh molds of pavered blocks so mm-hmm. we are using that concrete we are creating it uh, creating pavered blocks out of it so we don't want anything to go to waste but strictly speaking for mr selvaraj sans uh, question yeah. uh, it will be uh, like something like zero waste because uh, even in construction industry that is we will be buying bricks for example for a house we just estimate say the bricks to be out around say 5000 bricks so we may end up with constructing with 4000 bricks so 1000 1000 bricks we have to return to the company or we have to put it in waste but here it it will be optimized only for what it is needed it will be done for the printing so strictly speaking when the technology is becoming full proof the waste will be zero or very very minimum this is what the point we all should note yeah 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 i think that uh, answers one more question which mr vasudevan has mentioned that what about the environmental aspects in terms of chemical emissions or ghg emissions can 3d printing reduce i think the wastage is reducing so the ghg emissions also reduces and yes, also yes. it will be more uh, sustainable rather than That's right obviously indradeep sir is uh, very clear with this answer yes yeah. yeah. so uh, as a twasta we are doing one uh, research on this for um, for our next project where we are comparing what is what will be the carbon low carbon footprint percentage compare if we go to the conventional if we go to the go with 3d printing yes okay i have uh, one of uh, our members our faridabad local center mr manu bandra uh, he is uh, if he wants to ask some question online mr manu bandra kindly proceed Kindly unmute yourself, sir. Uh, I I think uh, he is not able to unmute. Anyhow, I will we will uh, go ahead with uh, the question which was raised by our uh, chairman C V D B, uh, uh, Mr M Nagraj, and also most of the quest, uh, uh, attendees have asked, what is the per square feet cost? for the printing structure actually it's a comparison so that comes in the mind ke kitna mileage degi you see what is that? <laughs> so, but think, buy, uh, buying a sports car we should not speak on uh, mileage <laughs> so, but once we are talking about a sustainable housing uh, a large scale development and once we are trying to reduce our costs uh, vis a vis i think we should be able to reduce the cost Person, maybe not today, but another four, five years down the line. Uh, if Tushar is able to say, uh, I will yeah, follow it up. Yeah. Sure. Uh, yeah. So current challenges that we are facing, I would say, is we have not started it on a mass scale. So we are just doing few pilot projects, and even in that, uh, we are doing a lot of research. So the on material side. uh because we want to make it more sustainable we are trying to bring in few other elements into the market so because of which we cannot uh, you know fix down to the costing as of now also once we start with the mass scale in india because there is a huge requirement in the market so the supply chain problem will also get solved which is currently a big challenge for us okay uh, so addressing this few issues the current costing uh, as of now we are trying to match down to the chennai's level chennai's market level also one more thing is uh, construction market is a very unorganized sector so the rates that we are incurring in chennai are completely different than that we get in mumbai or in gujarat 
other states. So everywhere it varies a bit. Okay, so currently we are about to match a Chennai's market price, but our aim here is to take it on a low, uh, like it should go lower than the conventional if you want to solve the affordable housing segment. Tushar, I have a follow-up question. I have a follow-up question. Supposingly, sure. the first 3D printed house which you've made, supposedly mm -hmm. now Tosta has to make it again. What will be right. the cost? Each of sure. you say? Uh, <laughs> so actually, it can be done with the help of, uh, as uh, if you remember, I was telling about the on-site printer and off-site printer, right? So uh, mm -hmm. the structures that we have did so far are off-site printers. So with off-site printer, where you are printing the modules at the site and uh, shipping them to the location, uh, you have to incur a little bit more cost because you are shipping all the modules to the site, then you are assembling all the modules, right? Once you start with the on-site 3D printing, the cost will... Once you start with the on-site 3D printing, that cost will, be, uh, will not be there. So the costing will automatically come down. And our on-site 3D printer is getting ready by the end of March. So by next two months. And we are going to do a few projects with that printer. And I guess at that time, we'll be able to tell you exactly how much that the cost has come down compared to what we have incurred using the off-site 3D printer. That will be a better timing. Okay. Great. Uh, Mr. Joshi, have... uh, Mr. Joshi, I yes, have one sir. question. This is Nagra mm -hmm. speaking. Yes, sir. See, the, whenever we introduce any latest technology, right. it is only for low-cost technology. As I have already pointed out, because the conventional method, you know that we need to spend more money. And when we go for mass housing schemes, because most of the uh, rural people in India, they need houses less than uh, 10,000 or even uh, less than that. So therefore, we have to find out a technology which is affordable to the maximum rural people so that we are help, helping the poor and also helping the country. That is the purpose yes. of going for an innovative uh, technology. You know? So now, unfortunately, you are not able to tell us the correct picture. It is in the initial stage. I do agree. Yes. When you go for mass uh, productions, probably it may come down. But right at the moment, what I came to know, it is something like 25% more than the conventional technology. So am I right? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. It's true. Yeah. So shall I add a point to this uh, discussion? Yeah, yeah, please. Sir? Yes, please. Yes, please. Yeah. Uh, uh, when I was exploring with this technology of, uh, that is uh, with uh, one Philippines uh, company, one by uh, Mr. Andre Rudenko, uh, what they have posted in their website is, uh, uh, they have constructed recently a hotel suit building of 1200 square feet. What they are giving in their conclusion is the cost is reduced in the rate of 30 to 40 percent of the total cost because it's actually even I have also shown a video of that a hotel suit uh, uh, building. So what they are telling 30 percent cost reduction, but they have included the time also because mm -hmm. they say like uh, they have completed the construct entire construction in say some 10 to 15 days. That kind of timing also has been included as a parameter of measuring the cost. So many parameters are being involved in this. So because if everything like gantry girder or the robotic uh, arm, the frame, the nozzle, everything is in, in place and we have transported everything and we have started the process, we can complete this in say 21 days like what Vasta is claiming. In that situation, we have to include the time frame also as one of the parameters. Imagine just a house. How is it possible to complete a house in, in 20 days? So we have to do for our minimum, say, 30 to 45 days of, a, say, 10 lakh project. But this 10 lakh project will definitely be completed in, say, 4 lakhs, but within one month. This is what the thing. So in my point, we have to include the time frame also as one of the measuring parameter of the cost. We have to do Doctor, gradually. Doctor, for this point, right. I just wanted to say yes, there sir. are commercial buildings and residential buildings. Yes, in sir. residential buildings, time is not the factor. It is the durable and safe structure is very much required. Yes, in a sir. commercial building, those people who invest money for the construction of a commercial building, they wanted to get back as much early as possible because they are raising the loan from the bank. 
or that they have to repay the money along with the interest. If it is delayed, the project is delayed, it is going to increase the cost of the structure. So therefore, as far as this particular technology is being applied only for the residential purpose, so that time factor need not be considered. This is my opinion. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Definitely. And one more point what you have uh, mentioned is like, as this is a new innovative technology, it will take time to gain up the pace. True. Then True. Only we are yes. yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I, I also have uh, one point to make, uh, uh, Mr. M. Nar Nagarajji, that yes, uh, I think if uh, the volume of a particular design is more, let's say it's a, a row housing or something, like, I think that cost per uh, unit definitely will come down. If we are talking about one house, obviously the cost will be there. But if we have a row housing or similar, a, a large volume, I think we can, the cost can be comparable to the construction, normal construction cost. That's my submission. But that's yes. what I, what I meant in the beginning, it yes. is applicable for mass housing scheme. Yes, it, it should be. Yes. I think the cost should come down. Uh, I have one question from our uh, Faridabad local center uh, member, uh, IS Chauhanji. He is a structural engineer. He says that, do you have a video that slots can be provided for reinforcement? Tushar, do you have any video where you provide some reinforcement slots? Actually, we have yes. a lot of time. I'm, I'm really sorry. So many questions are cropping up. We just have another two to three minutes after that. Yeah. Uh, so you have any video? Sure. On that? Yes, we have a video on YouTube, sir. Uh, okay. Of the same video which I've shown, where you can see that the walls itself is a hollow wall in which there is an infill pattern. Okay, so in that uh, gap, you put the reinforcements. Okay. You can okay. add, yes. Okay. And also for MEP integration and all, also you can use those things. Okay, so the, those things... Uh, Joshi, I am given to understand, I am given to understand the LNT has built a house in uh, near Chennai, integrating the reinforcement bars. Is it true? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, they have uh, they have constructed one uh, house. Two story building. Two story building. With, yes, yes. Two story building. Yes. yes, they have they have made a two story building. Yes. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, I think we are uh, we have we are overshooting the time now. So we are five fifty five. So I think uh, I would uh, wrap up the session. And it has been a wonderful session. We have got still many unanswered questions. I would uh, request all the attendees. I'm sharing a screen right away. And uh, for uh, any questions, sir. Please mail us at faridabadlc at ieiindia.org. We, uh, we would definitely pass on your questions to our panelists and definitely go ahead with the answers. I would... Uh, like to close down before that, I'll just write, uh, say two words and then I'll proceed for the vote of thanks by our honorary secretary. While our achievements have been incredible, we still have a long way to go. It's creating large number of houses with 3D printers is sustainability dream. And we'll need even more pioneers like Twista in this space going forward. 3D printers in construction are al already a practical reality. But as more time passes and our technology advances further, we'll get more ideas, find more better ways to use a 3D printer for a betterment of sustainable living. With these words, I would like now request our Honorable, Honorable uh, Secretary, uh, Sri K.R. Gupta ji, for vote of thanks and uh, wrapping up the session. Sir, please. Good evening, everyone. Am I audible in the city? Yeah, yeah. Respected President Dr. Ak Thakre, Chairman CVDV, Engineer M. Nagraj, Chairman of the Committee for the Advancement of Technology and Engineering, Dr. Ranganath, Chairman Engineer Sandeep Bhandaji, Hridabad Local Center, our distinguished speakers, and my fellow FLC committee members, and all the audience present. On behalf of the Institution of Engineers, India, Freedom of the Local Center, take this opportunity to propose word of thanks for those who have directly and indirectly contributed to this webinar on 3D printing technology and 
innovative technique in civil engineering. I would like to express my sincere gratitude to Mr. Nilanjan Sen Gupta Ji, Director Technical IEI, Madam Aparna Datta, and their team for their support for making this event a very success. My sincere thanks to all the speakers, Dr. C. Jai Guruji, Dr. Tushar Joshi Ji, for making excellent presentation and making this webinar interesting and very meaningful and educative to the audience. I extend a very hearty vote of thanks to our chairman, CDD engineer, Ms. M. Nagraj, and Dr. Dr. G. Ranganath for sparing their valuable time to and enlighten us with their knowledge and the presence. My sincere thanks to the event moderator, I.S. Obraiji, for the unflinching support and making this event a great resounding success. The main objective of the webinar was to enlighten all of us present here to create the housing for the impoverished in need of adequate shelter, 3D printing, presents a promising opportunity for the construction industry to become both greener and more cost effective often by the considerable margins. Last but not the least, I thank to our honorable IE members and all the participants who blessed with their presence and took their valuable time of their busy schedule. Your presence and participation make the event up to the mark. With these words and a kind message, we move to the end of the two days webinar. Thank you very much and Jai Hind. Thank you.